Yo, welcome back, YouTube. All right, so as I promised in this video, we're gonna go over the um, secretly recorded videos between Diane Downs and um, what's his name, Robert Knickerbocker, whatever. Knickerbocker. I just, I just know that's his last name. All right, so we're gonna go over the recorded videos of those conversations that she didn't know was happening, and. Um, I, I, I'm, I turned the volume up as much as I could, so I hope you hear everything, and so let's get started. Yes, may I speak to Diane Downs, please? Uh, she is not here. She's not there. Can I leave a message? She'll be here till Thursday. Oh, okay. Well, I'll leave the message anyway. Okay. Okay. Would you tell her that Nick Knickerbocker called? N-I-C. K-N-I-C. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. K-N-I-C-K-E-R. Okay. B-O-C-K-E-R. Okay. And I'm in uh, Chandler, Arizona, and I'd like to talk to her. So in case she calls, you know, before Thursday, I'd like you to give her that message, please. Okay, um, she has your number and everything? Yes, she knows okay. how to get in touch with me. All right, I'll okay. get the message to her. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Bye-bye. And just to touch on one thing real quick, number one, obviously the lady you're seeing in this video, or this picture, is Diane Downs. The guy in the suit, um, let me rephrase that, the guy up the stairs in the suit with the beard is Knickerbocker and the guy behind Diane Downs is the detective who was covering the case. Just to lay all that out there. questions I wanted to ask you. Alright. Okay. Uh, what have you... I called you to know how to get a hold of you. Well, that's why I figured you'd call. That's on it. Again, I'm, I'm sorry. I've really got the volume turned all the way up. So, if you're unable to hear what she's saying, I apologize for that. I've even got the microphone turned towards the computer to try to pick up the most sound that I can pick up. So... If you're unable to hear her, I apologize, um, but there should be some key points through this phone call that is going to go with the last video. What place you could call? Hi. Listen, uh, what have you told the police about me? Nothing. Well, uh, you must have told them something, because, uh... I got to have an alibi for that night. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. They already told me. They're bluffing. They tried that with some of my friends here, too. You work the day before and you work the day after, right? Yeah. There's no reason, there's no possible way you could have been here. Well, I know that. That's all you need. Well, they don't think so, Diane. And I don't, you know, I already had to talk to them once, and now they're back again, and I got, they're talking Are you about... Arizona right now? Well, I guess they called me. I'm supposed to go see them on Tuesday and take a lie detector test. Don't do it. Well, I got nothing to hide. I know you have nothing to hide. It's a matter of principle. Well, I don't, I don't like the cops bothering me, Diane. They're trying to pin this on me, and I didn't do it. And, um, I don't know, there's a whole lot of stuff up in the air right now. I can prove that I didn't do it. That's why they're trying to pin it on somebody else. They're so sure that I was part of it that they're going to try to pin it on somebody else. In my opinion, that sounds like a guilty conscience to me. When somebody's trying to talk you out of not, or like, alright, so this dude's trying to get himself out of the situation. 
by taking a lie detector test. He said, I ain't got nothing to hide. I didn't do anything, blah, 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 whatever the case may be. But she is damned and, de and determined to stop this guy from going and speaking to the cops. Because she, and, and this is how narcissists think. She's worried about what he's going to say about her. That's what it really comes down to. Is that he, she is worried about what Knickerbocker is going to say about her. And she's afraid it's going to make her look more of a sus... Or she's afraid it's going to make her look like more of a suspect. Well, they're certainly not going to pin it on me. I know you didn't do it. Well, I'm not and you don't have to take a lie detector. They can ask you, you can refuse, and there's no way they can make you take one. I talked to my attorney about that. Um, they asked another friend of mine here to do it. They accused us of having an affair, this friend of mine and me. And um, he was on a fishing trip when I got shot. And they were suggesting that he was the one that shot me. And he said, no, I was on a fishing trip. And he had three witnesses to prove it, and they still wanted to take a lie detector. He said, no, I won't do it. I don't have to prove to you that I was on a fishing trip. I'm going to touch on one thing real quick right there. When she said, well, they asked another friend of mine to take a lie detector test because they thought we were having an affair. And in the next video, if not this one, I'm going to show the interview with Steve where he mentioned and where even she mentioned she had like 10 affairs in like two years. So it's not far-fetched to believe that she had an affair with multiple men. And you don't have to prove anything either. They will try to ask a lot of things of you that are absolutely useless, senseless. They'll try to drag you to the mud. They're going to try to make you look like a creep. They're going to try to make you look like a creep. And they're bluffing. I wish you had not, it's been six weeks now, and I wish you knew what I was going through, and then you'd understand what I'm saying, and you trust me. Don't take the lie detector because you're giving in to them. Well, I got nothing to hide, Diane. Neither does anybody else. Well, so I might as well take it, just get it over with. That clears me. You may if you want. Um, I'm glad to call. I need somebody to talk to. I was thinking about you real bad last night. You just need somebody to talk to again. But, uh, how's everything? Nothing changed. That's good. Things have changed a lot for me. Yeah, I can imagine so. I have a still quite a Nothing I can do about that. Oh, I know. The scar won't be very bad. It'll probably be going away already. I get to go back to work next week. Chrissy's in a foster home. The state won't give her back. I haven't seen her for over two weeks. And I haven't seen Danny for almost two weeks. I haven't seen Danny in her. So, needless to say, I'm going to be suing the hell out of everybody. You're going to be doing what? Suing them. Oh. As in six million bucks. That's a lie in itself right there. And, and this is a narcissistic thing to do is they will, they'll come up with stories and lies to make their self out to be the victim. But 
it's not going to be in this video. I, I actually got, this is actually, like I said in the first one, when I said this is going to be like a two or three part series, I meant it. Um, it's just because I dove deeper into it. And there's so much to cover on this that I can't put it all into one or two videos. Um, but there's reasonable suspicion that she's the one that done this and is is not far fetched to understand why they would remove the kids from her care if they thought she's the one that did this and the end result is she is the one that did it that's the problem here is she is the one that did it but this is the way narcissists are is they will play innocent to the very end they will be the victim to the very end. And they will stick to whatever bullshit story they think somebody's going to believe in order to get them off of the hook for what they did. And that's what narcissists do. Is they will stick to one story to try to get their self off the hook. And is this is a prime example of a narcissist playing the victim. It's nothing big. It's just a lawsuit. One that I can win hands down. But, um, I'm sorry they're doing this to you. Um, I wish there was something I could do, but I can't say anything to them to stop and from what they're doing. Well, I just wanted to know what you, you know. What, do, what did I tell them? I told them nothing about you except the truth. Yeah, well, that's what I told them. That's all. Um, told them that we were together. You were considering marrying me. Cry, cry. And that you had, you were going to move to Oregon and apply for a job here. And it might... So, I mean, again, this is a very narcissistic thing to do. It's like... She told the cops that, well, he was, like, we were together. Like, this is a married man, okay? And she told the cops that her and him were together and that he was considering marrying her. And in case you don't know how the law works in the U.S., first you've got to get a divorce before you can remarry some or marry someone else. That's how the law in the U.S. works. So, that in itself does not make sense. Well, I told the cops we were together. I told the cops we were going to get married. But you failed to mention to the cops that he was already married? And you... And this is her... This is the reason why she did what she did. And you're going to find that out shortly. But this is the reason why she did what she did. Was because she wanted to marry this man. And she thought the only way that he would do that. Is if she got rid of her kids. Because he made it very clear. That he did not want to be a dad. And I actually put that in the beginning of my last video. Where. Knickerbocker said that he doesn't believe her. And that. He, for one, he doesn't believe that she would pull over on the side of the road in the middle of the night for anybody with her kids in the car if she loved them the way that she says she does. But also, he brought up the fact that he mentioned that he wasn't going to move to Oregon and that he, would, he didn't want to be a dad. And so that's clear motive as to why she did what she did. My dad wasn't holding a position open for you. There was merely an opening, which you had the same opportunity as anybody else to apply for. And then you changed your mind. And it wasn't because of me, and it wasn't because of the kids, it was because of Charlene. That's all I told him. Okay. So she said she told him that he had an equal opportunity to go to work with her dad in Oregon, which would have meant him moving to the state she was living in and her response to that as to why he didn't is because it wasn't for her or it wasn't because of her 
It wasn't because of the kids. It was because of his wife. That's why he didn't move to Oregon. But, again, if you go back to the very last video that I posted, in the very beginning of that video, he clearly stated, I told you I wasn't moving to Oregon, and I told you I didn't want to be a dad. But she's still sticking by this story. That's basically all I wanted to know. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything to her, I don't know. How's the weather? Just like it always is. And... Literally, she's on the phone with this man talking about the murder of her kids or attempted murder of two of her kids and the murder of one of her kids. And she's going to ask him about the weather? Again, that's a very narcissistic thing to say. Like, how's the weather? That's all you can come up with? How's the weather? Put in the comments what you think about that one. How is the weather? When I'm on a conversation with you about the murder and attempted murder of my three kids... Or let me rephrase that. The murder of one of my kids and the attempted murder of two of my kids. And your only question is, how's the weather? What is wrong with you, lady? June or July or whatever the hell month it is. You're in July, Okay. It's hot. Yeah. How's Not your bad. jungle rock? Nothing serious. I know they're going to ask you, do you remember when you saw that 22? 
I saw that 22 at your trailer, and I saw it before you left for Oregon. Two weeks before I left, correct? Oh, hell, Diane, but you were packing the day before you left you out in the back of the car. No, Nick, think about it. I had a microwave, and I had a TV, and I had a whole bunch of stuff. The day that you saw that 22, I opened my trunk up, and my trunk was empty, was it not? Except for the 38 and the 22. Exactly. Exactly. All right. All right. So let's just break this one down real quick. All right. She's trying to convince this man, like, Number one, if you don't know anything about narcissists, that's what they call, um, that's what they call gaslighting. Alright, she's trying to convince him of what happened when he knows what really happened. But she's trying to gaslight him into admitting something else that follows her narrative of what actually, let me rephrase She's gaslighting him into trying to admit that something he saw wasn't true. That he didn't see a 22 Cougar and a 38 in the back of her car. She's trying to gaslight him into saying that that didn't happen. That's what narcissists do. That's that's a, a, a very common narcissistic tactic. But when I, when my parents left for Oregon one week before I left, my mother and I put the microwave in my trunk on a uh, Saturday, Saturday, I believe. Diane, you didn't have no damn microwave. Oh. The last week you were here in the back of your car? Yes, I did. Diane, I drove the car. I you had no damn did. microwave in it. Yes. See what I mean? That's gaslighting. Prime example of gaslighting. She's trying to to convince him that he saw something that he didn't see. She's trying to convince him that he saw a microwave in the back of the car, not two guns. When he's literally sitting here telling her, I saw a, 20, a 22 Cougar and a 38 in the back of your car, not a microwave. And he's laid it out there very clearly. I did not see a microwave back there. But this is a prime example of gaslighting. That's what she's trying to do, and that's a very common narcissistic tactic. Yes, I did. <sighs> okay. Whatever. You didn't have a microwave in it. Alright. I drove the car, right? Yes, you did. Okay. See? He said, I, you didn't have a microwave in it. She said, okay. He said, I drove the car, right? She said, yes, you did. So he saw what was in the back of that car. And he's being honest about what he saw in the back of that car. And she's trying to gaslight him into admitting something different from what he saw in the back of the car. She, she's bas Basically what she's trying to do is, for number one, she's trying to make him look crazy like he, he saw something that wasn't there. The other part is, is she's trying to make him follow her narrative that it was a microwave in the back of the car, not two guns. And he's literally, clearly sitting here saying, no, there was no microwave back there, there was two guns. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Yes, that means a lot. You had the 22 the night before you left. No, I didn't. Okay. See, even he's admitting, you had the 22 the night before you left. And she said, no, I didn't. But he saw what he saw. And again, that's a prime example of gaslighting. She's trying to convince him that he didn't see what he saw when he knows what he saw. And this is what narcissists do, is they will try to convince you that you're crazy, that maybe you didn't see what you thought you saw. Or maybe... What they're saying is actually true. And and that's the whole part of gaslighting is she's trying to make him come out to be the crazy one that he didn't see the guns in the back of the car when he knows for sure that he did. And this is why she doesn't want him to take the lie detector test. is because she doesn't want that to come up. If they say, did you see a twenty two Cougar in the back of her car? And he says yes. And the lie detector test says 
that he was being honest. She doesn't want that to come up. And that's why she's trying so hard to convince him to not take this lie detector test. You had it in the back of your car in that goddamn case. I had it in the car at least two weeks. It was about a week and a half before I left. I will agree with you. They took it back. You said you didn't want it. Do you remember I offered to give it to you? Yeah. You said you did not want it. I said right. Fine. And you gave it to Steve? Yes. When? A week and a half before I left. Okay. So she gave it a stick a week uh, to Steve a week and a half before she left. Now mind you, when she went to go visit this man, Knickerbocker, she was in Arizona. Steve is in Oregon. So explain to me how she gave a twenty two a twenty two Ruger to Steve who was in Oregon a week and a half before she left Arizona. Make that one make sense. Okay, I guess I'm blind, huh? You're not. Well, anyway, that's, you know, I, I'm not a judge and jury. I ain't got nothing to do with this shit. Yes, you are. Anything that you answer in that way proves. See, like I said, think about it. There's no physical way I could have done it. Therefore, they're trying to pin it on somebody that I know. And if you tell them that, they will not trust you. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Yes, they well, I understand what I saw, Diane. I mean, yes, shit. I know, but do you recall when you saw it? Yeah, in the back of your car. I know for a You fact. had to have it, otherwise you couldn't have offered it to me. I know, I offered it a week and a half. Never mind. I, I, I don't want to argue. I don't either. So I saw if everything was going down. Well, it's just the brakes. I know. But it's not fun. It's... I don't know. It's, it's unusual. Everybody knows me wherever I go. Well, I imagine so. Yeah, it's kind of keep your ass off TV. Huh? Yeah, keep your ass off TV. I have to go on TV. I have to tell them the truth because the cops won't listen. Okay, whatever. Well, listen, I got to go. I'm catching a flight to Texas in a little bit. Why? Well, I'm just going down there for the weekend. What are you supposed to take care of? Next week sometime, I don't know. Sure, whenever they call me back, tell me to come down and do it. Don't do it. Diane, I'm not lying to anybody. I know you're not, Nick. Would you listen to me and think rationally? If you were at work the day before and the day after, there's no way in hell that you could have gotten up there and done that. Okay, so there's no reason why I shouldn't take the lie detector test. There's no... See, and that's what I mean. It's like, she literally gave him an alibi. You were at the work the day before and the day up, so there's no way you could have done it. So why would he not take the lie detector test to clear himself? Like, anybody... Just thinking rationally would do that. They would be like, yeah, I'll be happy to take a lie detector test if it clears me from this crime. And she's trying to tell him, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Because she's worried about what he's going to say. And this is how narcissists think. This is how they operate. And this is why I say I can point this out from a mile away. Is She's only concerned about what he might say about her that would implicate her in this crime she's not worried about how it would actually affect him even though that's what she's trying to say she's trying to say she's protecting him the reality is is she's worried about what he's going to say about her she's worried about how it's going to implicate her she's going to she's worried about how it's going to affect her case as they go forward and all he's trying to do is clear himself. And she literally gave him an alibi on a recorded phone call. She said, I know you didn't do it. You were at work on this day and this day. So I know you didn't do it. So why would he not take a lie detector test to clear his name? Because me personally, I've, I've not only dove 
deep into narcissism. I've dove a lot into police interrogations and how they do their investigations. But they're trying to clear suspects is what they're trying to do. They're trying to not only tie up loose ends, but they're trying to clear suspects in order to tie up those loose ends. So if this man can go take a lie detector test, clear his name, that knocks him out of the suspect list or list of suspects. I'm sorry. So that makes them kind of hone in on her. And that's what she's worried about. Because she's worried that somebody's going to find out what she did. That's why she's trying so hard to get him to not do this lie detector test. Is because she knows that the end result of that lie detector test is going to point right back at her. And she's trying to cover her own ass. She ain't trying to cover nobody else, even though that's what she claims. She's only trying to cover herself. You should take it. And they're trying to get something out of you. I don't know what. Perhaps, do you want to know what it could be? What's that? That maybe Charlene did it. No, Charlene didn't do it. Oh, yeah. She was with me. And how did they know that? Because I was at a bar that night. Why you have to take well, well, why not? If I say no, it looks like I'm trying to hide something. There. And I well, ain't. My friend here, they accused, of, uh, they accused me of having an affair with him and that he helped me do this horrible thing. He refused to take the test and they've left him alone and now they're chasing you. Well, that's what they want. Well, they won't chase me very long. I just tell them what I know. And that'll be over. Well, you like fooling with those people. Just get it over with and it's done. And see, that's another narcissistic, narcissistic thing to do. Is now she's trying to say, oh, well, they might look like your wife did it. And this is what narcissists do, is they will literally try to find any scapegoat they can find to get their self out of the jam. And that's literally what she's trying to do here. Is she's trying to find, oh, well, they might think you did it. They might think your wife did it. They might think this guy did it. They might think this person did it. And the reality is, is she's trying to get herself out of a jam because she knows she's the one that did it. Okay, well, I got the boogie to the airport. Hi. I'm in. Thank you for returning the call. No problem. All right. Bye bye. Take care of yourself. Yep. Bye bye. See how she ended that phone call? Okay. I miss you. Like, really? Well, your kids were just shot, and the only thing you could think about is you miss this man? What the hell is wrong with you, lady? There was no remorse in that whatsoever. There was no tearful. Um, she's talking about she needs somebody to talk to, but not once did she mention her kids in, in this entire conversation. Talk to you? He just said that your daddy called. Did he say what he said? No. Not really. We're just, okay. you know, talking about Sue and stuff like that, and that was about it. That was... Yeah, that wasn't the reason my dad called. Oh. Okay. Um, you should have called Collect. Oh, I got money. Okay. Hey, first of all, I don't know who shot me and the kids. I haven't got the vaguest idea in the world. I also want you to know that there are... Did you get my letter? No. Okay, I sent a letter. Please read it. It will explain everything in detail about what's going on here, okay? Okay, it's the only letter I've sent you, so it's very important that you read it. Otherwise, you won't know what's going on. There are only four people in this world that I love more than anything, and that's Christy, Cheryl, Daniel, and you. 
Cheryl's gone, so I've got three other people to protect, and I'm trying my darndest to try and protect everybody that I can. Um, the detectives are going on the premise that either I shot my kids or somebody that knew me shot my kids. And they know that I didn't do it. Therefore, it had to be somebody that knew me. That's why they want you to take that stupid test. It isn't for you so much, I don't think. Maybe it is, I don't know. But do you remember the letters I told you that Charlene wrote? Mm -hmm. Okay, the ones that they're very degrading, talking about you and threatening me. I think I threw them all out, but I don't know. And they came and they took all of my letters, poems, personal things, and took them. Mm -hmm. And if I slipped and if I left one of those letters in there, I think I threw them all away because every time I got one, I would read it and throw it away. I'm sure of it, but I'm not positive. And if one of them is in there, they know that, Sh that Charlene has threatened me. All right. All right. This is what they like. I mentioned in the um, why narcissistic parents or bad parents video. Uh, I mentioned projection, and this is what that is. Is she's literally? <clears throat> I'm sorry. This is not even projection. This is what they call blame shifting, and this is also a very common narcissistic tactic. So you got projection. You got um, the victimhood, you got projection, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, blame shifting. And this is what she's trying to do, is she's literally trying to shift the blame onto somebody else to get the cops to look at somebody else. Because by her own admissions, the cops are looking at her as if she's the one that did it. And so... This is a prime example of what blame shifting looks like. She's literally trying to sh to direct the cops and everybody else because she feels like this is being recorded anyway. So she's literally trying to push the cops in a different direction away from her, even though she's the one, she knows she's the one that did this. Also, the phone calls are easy to trace. All they have to do is get a court order to requisition her father's phone bill and your phone bill from your house, and they will see how many times Charlene calls me. Okay. All right? So I'm trying to protect you. I'm trying to protect the kids. Taking a lie detector is not going to get you out of trouble. I'm not in trouble, Diane. I do not um, seem to understand no, that. That's what I'm saying. In case... You in case you ain't caught on, like, the first part of this video was tape one. This is tape two. So she's still trying to talk this man out of taking a lie detector test because she's afraid of what he's going to say about her. That's what it really comes down to is she's, she's trying to look, make it seem like she's concerned about him when the reality is... She's concerned about what he might say about her. That's really, in a nutshell, what it is. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to take it to uh, prove your innocence. Okay? All it can do is get you into trouble. And my kids, they're going to ask you a lot of questions that have nothing to do with you to try and tie things up. They want to keep my kids away from me. Right now, I can't see my kids at all. We're totally apart. I can't see him. To be honest with you, she shouldn't see him. If she's... I know for a fact, like I said, I've dove deep into this this investigation. So I know for a fact she's the one that shot her kids. And she's trying literally everything she can think of to make sure that her kids does not get taken away from her, including trying to convince a man who is innocent to not take a lie detector test. And if you're innocent. In a crime like this. The first thing you're going to want to do. Is to clear your own name. Because you don't want to be a suspect. But. She is so. Hell bent. On what she wants. And how it affects her. That she's really not. Considering anybody else. In this situation. Not even the kids. Because, like I said, I, 
like I said, I dove deep into this. I know she's the one that shot them. Okay, I know she's the one that shot them. All right, and I even explained it in the other vid in the last video why I think that because there's no way, according to her own um, admission, that she faked throwing the keys and she pushed the guy away. She jumped in the car. Stuck the keys in the ignition, crunk up the car, and drove away without this guy firing a single other shot. That's not going to happen, okay? Like, if somebody shot three kids, they're not going to leave an adult alive. That's not going to happen. And in the time it took for her to push him away, jump in the car, stick the keys in the ignition, crank it up, and drive away, he could have easily shot her multiple times. So you're not even going to convince me that that's a real story. That that's a viable story. Come on now. She's trying to get her own self out of a jam. And she's literally doing. And this is proof. That she's literally doing whatever she can. To get herself out of that jam. And they want to keep it that way for the rest of their lives. And if they can find any kind of garbage by talking to you. Or a lie detector from you. Also, a lie detector is not accurate. They can make it read any way they want to. They can make you look like a liar, even when you're telling the truth. And so if you take it, it'll read anything they want it to. They can't prove that you were here, but they could prove that you wanted it done. And if you think about it logically, there's only two people in the world that would do this. And that's Steve and Charlene. And only Charlene has a motive. What? What? All right. <laughs> she said there's only two people that could do this. Steve and Charlene. Steve is the father of the three kids involved. And I'm not going to put it in this video. It's going to be in the next one. I promise you it's going to be in the next one. There is an interview with Steve where he mentioned how much he loved those kids and how how he mentioned how bad of a parent she was. All right. <clears throat> so that in itself contradicts itself. All right. But then to say that Charlene is the other possible suspect. And, and again, this goes back to what I said in, in the earlier part of this video, when this is what they would do is they would try to blame shift other people for their own actions. They will, they will try to put what they did onto somebody else to get their self out of a jam. And that's what she's doing here. Is she's listing anybody she could think of to get herself off the hook. That's what she's doing here. What's her motive? Oh, that simple. Okay. Charlene knows you, Charlene is probably the only person that knows you better than I do. And I know that if something like this happened, you would run for the hills. Charlene knows that too. And if something like this happened to me, I would be hurt because my kids are destroyed. And you would never reach out for me. Therefore, she is assured of never having to worry about me again. That is her motive. My motive, there's none. There is no motive for me to do it. There was no life insurance on the kids at all. If I didn't want the kids, I could have given them to Steve. I could have given them to my parents. I could have given them to the state. I didn't have to get rid of them by killing them. Anybody would have taken them. There was absolutely well, no can, motive for me to do it. Yeah, well, My motive I, would simply be revenge because he hates me. He yeah, but he loves the kids, so you know. Excuse me? Well... Y'all called that, right? She's like, oh, Steve would do anything to hurt me because he hates me. And even Knickerbocker, the man who did not want to be a father, understood the fact that Steve loves those kids. She's trying to make... <clears throat> Excuse me. If you saw the last video, you saw she was trying... Like, she was literally throwing Steve under the bus. As if Steve didn't want anything to do with the kids... Steve was mad that she was pregnant, blah, 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 blah. When the reality was, Steve wanted the kids. Steve was denied the kids. 
because of her own testimony. And the guy that she was having an affair with even came out and said, Steve loved those kids. So you tell me, put in the comments, you tell me who you think was in the wrong. Was Steve in the wrong? Or was Diane in the wrong? Who was lying here? You're not making any sense, Diane. You know, if Charlene got rid of them, that would, you know, well, look at this way. Say you did it. You get rid of the kids, you get rid of Charlene, and you can have me, right? Uh, no, that wouldn't hurt help. You know why? Why? Because you don't like trouble. Well, I certainly don't. That's the truth. You hate kink, and I know that. And this has got to be one of the kinkiest things that's ever happened. All I'm trying to do is protect you. Well, I'm not accusing anybody. I don't think Charlene did it. Well, I know she did. She couldn't have. All right, so she, like, that statement in itself is the problem. Is she said I'm only trying to protect you, like. Her kids have not even crossed her mind in this situation. She's not trying to protect her kids. She's trying to protect Knickerbocker. And she's literally... I was I was given this reference um, in my... Um, what is it? Um, I was given this reference in uh, my own mediation case. And when they were talking about, and, and this was during orientation, this was before we actually got to mediation, is they mentioned that a lot of people or parents, well, what they would do is they call it throwing noodles against the wall. It's like you're literally throwing anything against the wall to see what sticks. And this is that's what it seems like to me that she's trying to do, is she's, Look like literally throwing everything out there that she could throw out there to see what sticks, and nothing's sticking, because none of it makes sense. Because the only point, the only person that it points out to is her, and she's literally doing everything she can to put it on anybody else. She's trying to put it on a Knickerbocker. She's trying to put it on his wife Charlene. She's trying to put it on Steve. When then, in reality, she's the one that done this. And this is why I say it, it, it brings me back to my mediation, um, what, do they, uh, what do they call it? Um, but it brings me back to my own mediation case is where they mention that all they're literally trying to do is throw noodles against the wall to see what sticks. And nothing is sticking. And so she's scrambling trying to find something that sticks to somebody other than her. And I'm not trying to say that she did. I'm simply trying to get you to think like the detectives are thinking. You haven't been here. I know exactly what's happening. I know what they're thinking. I've worked with them for... I've been here for seven weeks almost. And I know their tactics. They will come on being super sweet, super nice. They will tell you that everything that they ask you to do is to help you. And it doesn't. Right now, Nick, you see, when this first happened, they wanted to pin it on somebody. And it was me. Well, that's their job. they got to find somebody. Exactly. And that's the word. Somebody. They decided that I did it. They started throwing out accusations before they had their lab test back. They didn't decide that she did it. They, did, they looked at all the evidence and decided that she did it. There's a big difference. They didn't just come out and say... Oh, we think you did it. They took all the evidence that was provided and all the evidence that they gathered and they said, no, you're the one that did it. And now she's literally trying to find somebody else to pin it on because she's trying to get out of the jam herself when she even knows she's the one that did it. And this is how narcissists work. This is how narcissists operate. Is... When people start pointing the finger at them, they try to point the finger at somebody else because they want to take that negative attention off of them and put it on to somebody else because they don't want to get caught up in a crime that they know they were guilty of. 
Now their lab tests are back, and it proves I didn't do it. Now they look like fools because they told everybody I was a suspect when there was no reason for me to be a suspect. I am the only suspect. They had a grand jury here to try and indict me. They couldn't do it because I didn't do it. There was no reason to indict her? If you go back to the last video I posted, she actually made the statement that her kids were the lucky ones and she was the unlucky one. And the reason for that statement was is because she was the unlucky one due to the fact that she could not tie her own shoe for a month. Mind you, one of her kids was shot to death. The other kid was put in ICU. And the other kid is paralyzed from the waist down. So, by her own admission, she was the unlucky one because she could not tie her shoe for a month. And you tell me that's not going to raise suspicion? That's not going to get people looking at you? Are you crazy? Obviously. Never mind. That's a rhetorical question. I'm sorry. That I meant it as a real question, but it turned out to be a rhetorical question because obviously she's crazy if she really believes that that story holds water. And now they're looking like a bunch of assholes, which is what they are. And so now they're going to try and make it look like a lover did it, or a lover's wife, or... Well, what, just why... Why? Why do you, uh, why are you just so insistent on me not taking the polygraph test? What don't you want me to tell them? And that doesn't make any... And, and I actually brought this up earlier in the video like she's very insistent on this guy not taking a lie detector test and and my opinion is because she's worried about what he's going to say it's not about him clearing his name it's about what he's going to say about her there is nothing Nick there's nothing that you can tell them other than if they let's see if they ask you something i don't know what they can ask you but if they ask, they can ask you, me anything they want do you know anything about the shooting and you say no and they can make that machine say you're telling a lie that incriminates you jesus i've been I watching too many cops and robber movies i oh nick i'm in a cop and robber movie I never would have believed the legal system was this way until I got into it. I'm only going to this trouble because I love you and I want to protect you from them. I know what they're like. I've been dealing with them. I'm not trying to get you back. You know that. I haven't called you in a very long time. I have not written. But she just literally sat here and said, I'm going through all this because I love you. And then turned right around and said, I'm not trying to get you back. I just know how the system works. Like, no. It's because you're worried about what he's going to say. That's obvious. You're worried about what he's going to say. You're worried that what he's going to say is going to incriminate you. That's what you're worried about. Let's be honest here. I would not have called or written now except that you called me and told me what's up. And I know that it's very important that I protect you from that. Because I know what's happening. You don't. You believe them. Don't believe them. Don't compromise. Don't give in to them on this because you can only hurt yourself. You can't help yourself at all. The best way you can help yourself is to say, look. I was at work on Thursday, I was at work on Friday. There's no way in hell that I could have done that, period. Because there's, the time element is wrong. There's no way you could have done that and been back in, at work on Friday. I know, exactly. Right. So there's no reason for you to take the test to prove you're innocent. Therefore, there's no reason to take the test, period. Well, I'm just going to have to make that decision, Diane. I know. I'm not going to ask you for an answer. I'm just trying to tell you what's going on here. And I'm not placing any accusations. 
I don't play detective. I am not trying to find out who shot me and my kids. I am simply trying to get my life back together and move on. Period. Um, shoot, if I knew that somebody had done it, I'd take care of it. I really would. If Charlene orders this shooting, I hope they catch her, but I don't think she did. If Steve ordered it, I hope they catch him, but I don't think he did. I don't know who did it. I know you didn't, because you love me and because you like the kids, and because you're a very passive person. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. That contradicts her own statement, or actually his statement as well. Like, he made it very clear that he did not want to be a dad. He made it very clear. So for her to say, well, I know you didn't do it because you love the kids. I know Steve didn't do it. I know Charlene didn't do it. Even though through this entire conversation that we're covering right now, she literally implicated Shai Charlene and Steve. And then she's going to turn right around and say, well, I know they didn't do it. And I know you didn't do it because you love the kids. Even though Knickerbocker made it very, very clear that he did not want to be a dad. He did not want to move to Oregon and he didn't want to, he didn't want any part of that. So how is she gonna sit here and say he loved the kids when he made it very clear he didn't want anything to do with the kids? But I don't know about anybody else. You're the only person in the world that I'm positive about. You and me. Everybody else I don't know about. But I'm not going to go to the cops and say, hey, I think such and such did it because she accused, because she threatened me. Charlene says some really wicked things in her letters. But I never think, I, I'm not going to run to the cops and say, I think she did it because she threatened to destroy my life. I'm not going to run and say, she threatened to, um, what she say? I'm going to fix you so that Nick will never want you again or something like that. I'm not going to go to the cops and say that. Because that's not a good reason to have somebody thrown in the can for the rest of their life. Just because she made everybody makes threats. Yeah, even you made a few. That's right. See, Knickerbocker said even she made a few threats to his wife. So she's literally trying to put the blame on his wife when the reality was she literally did the same thing. And her only concern seems to be him. And that's a big problem. Because your kids were shot. <clears throat> and you're, you're... You're literally sitting here saying the only person you care about is him. Well, you got two surviving kids. You don't care about them? You got one who's paralyzed and one is in is in ICU. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you got another one that's dead. And your only concern is him? Again, what is wrong with you, lady? And, there's, and that's why I will not go to the cops and say, I think such and such did it because I don't think she did it. But if she did, I hope she burned. Well, uh, somebody did. Somebody hurt me and somebody hurt my kids. And somebody took my daughter from me. And I am very unhappy about that. But I can't spend my whole life regretting it. I hurt sometimes. But I get better and I'm going to keep going. And when this is all over and my kids and I are back together, that's the way it's going to be. And I'm not going to fight the system anymore. Right now, I'm the only person that's willing to stand up. I wish you knew what it was like. I wish you could be here to see the detectives, how they work, to read the newspaper articles and, and the insinuations, and the way that they will talk to you for two weeks. They really acted like they believed there was somebody else out there. And I, I told them everything I could. I answered their questions over and over and over. They were so absolutely sweet. I got very upset. They wanted to do surgery on Christy to remove a bullet fragment from her back, which they didn't even tell me was there. I was just at the end of my rope. And the detective said something about he wants the, the remains, you know, the, 
fragment. And I said, why do you even ask? You took it out of Danny's spine without even asking. He goes, we don't have to ask. And he got real bitchy about it. And I says, ah, so you're not as sweet as you thought you were. And he goes, no, no, I'm just fine. It's their, it's their face. They have to put it on. Otherwise, if they come on hardcore, like Beretta or whatever, nobody is going to tell them anything. She literally got mad because they took the bullet fragment out of her son's spine? Leave in the comments how you think that would make sense. She got mad because not only did they remove the bullet fragments from her son's spine, they also wanted to remove the bullet fragments from her daughter. And she was mad about it? Like, any concerned parent would be like, do whatever you gotta do to save my kid. Do whatever you gotta do to find this killer. And whatever the case may be. But she was mad because they took the bullet fragment out of it. Or, or out of, of the kids. And the only reason I could think of is because she was afraid it would lead back to her. Right now, they don't have a murderer, and they're trying to frame somebody for it. And I don't know who they picked, but damn it, if you take a lie detector, you are going to incriminate, you could, I'm not saying you will, it is possible that you could incriminate somebody, just because everybody else has refused to take a lie detector. I have a friend here, Greg. They asked him to take a lie detector. He was like, Notice what she just said there? I'm not saying you would, but you could incriminate somebody. Her concern is that he's going to incriminate her. That's her concern. And that's how narcissists think. They're only concerned about how the entire situation benefits them or affects them. And so she's concerned that whatever he might tell the cops in the lie detector test is going to incriminate her. Has nothing to do... With the welfare of her kids, or the benefit her of her kids, or anything like that, it's about how it would incriminate her. On a fishing trip, they wanted to know if he was really on a fishing trip. He says, "Fine, I'll take your test." And then he thought about it. And he says, "No, because the test could come out anywhere they want it to. And if it comes out that I lied about being on the fishing trip, even though I know I was there, they've got it." And they'll dog him forever. So he said, no, I'm not going to take your test. And they said, okay, fine. And that's the last he's heard. That's been over two weeks now. And the last, that's the last he's heard about it. Many other people are subject to the test, to being asked. And everybody has the same opinion. Fuck on that. We're not going to take their damn test because it can turn out any way they want it to. Even if you couldn't physically be here, you could have ordered it done. Charlene could have ordered it done. Because I know for a fact it wasn't you. I know for a fact Charlene didn't pull the trigger. Steve didn't pull the trigger. But I don't know who did. And that's all I'm saying is don't say anything. If you say something, it could get turned around. If you say nothing, it can't be turned around. And that's all there is to it. And I hope that I threw away all the letters, but I don't know that I did. I know they got your letter, the one that you wrote me, at the very beginning. Yep. They've got that one. They've got all my poems. My diaries. And I'm almost positive I threw away the letters, but I don't know for sure. I don't either. If they ask you about it, I don't know what to tell you to tell them. But I'm not saying this to scare you. Get grief. This is 33 years old. You've seen just about as much as anybody. I'm just saying it because I love you, and I love my kids. Right now, I'm fighting for my kids. I have nothing else. And they're keeping my kids away, and every time that somebody says something, every time Steve says something or my aunt says something, they think it's insignificant. But the cops melt it down, and it fits their mold, and they have just cause to keep my kids away from me. And I'm slowly going crazy. I can't stand it. I'm lonely. I sit at night and watch TV, and I am bored to tears. I go to bed at night, and there's nobody there to talk to. 
when I see everything again. I, I'm not climbing the walls or dabbling or screaming in my sleep, and I don't even dream about it anymore. But when I, before I fall asleep, I can see it all again. Every bit of it. I can see the blood. I, I can smell it. Ugh. It's terrible. And it's all there. But I'm lonely. I want my kids. I need my kids. There's nobody else here to help me heal but my kids. And they're keeping them from me. And I don't want anybody saying anything that's going to keep my kids from me. And I also don't want anybody saying anything that's going to implicate you. I can't be implicated, Diane. The truth is, if she don't want anything being said, she don't want anything being said that can implicate her. And to say, well, I'm lonely, you know, I don't have anybody to talk to, blah, 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 it's still all about her. Like, it's not really about the kids. It's more about how she feels about the situation. She feels lonely because she doesn't have her kids. She feels like this man can implicate her in something that she doesn't want to be implicated for, even though she's clearly guilty of it. So, like, none of that makes sense. Like, that's, again, in itself, a very narcissistic thing to say. Is her only concern is about how this entire situation affects her. You can't. You can't even imagine what it's like to have a baby. I took a lie detector, Snake. Well, you took it? Yes, I did. Well, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Because the lie detector turned out the way they wanted it to. They didn't give me the test. It was a private test taken on the side. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> they asked, are you going to tell the truth? I said yes. It said I was telling the truth. They asked, if a white male stranger was holding the gun that shot my kids, I said yes. It said I was telling the truth. They asked, were you holding the gun that shot your kids? I said no. It said I was lying. It can't go both ways. You're right. It cannot go both ways. The fact is you are lying because you were the one holding the gun. That's how that works. That's how lie detector tests work. That's why they do them. Is to point out lies. First off, they start you off with simple questions to determine whether or not you're being honest, so that when you lie, they can determine whether or not you're telling a lie. That's how lie detectors work, even back in the 80s. Either he's holding the gun or I'm holding the gun. Either he's holding the gun. See what I mean? Well, how come that day that I wouldn't talk to you, you called Gamian? And said I was the only one that could keep you from getting thrown in jail. I didn't say that you were the only one. I said I needed to talk to you so that you wouldn't say anything. Well, Gammy told me why I didn't talk to you. I know. Well, Gammy said that your comment... I, what I said was they're trying to throw me in jail and I need to talk to you. They're uh, still... They, I don't think they're trying anymore. They may be. I don't know. Now they're pretty much trying to find a friend that has done this. See, Nick, there's no way I could have done it. All their lab tests prove I didn't do it. The time element proves I didn't do it. I hey, didn't do Diane, it. Diane, you, you know. What? I can't, you know. You tell me you didn't do it, fine. I, but I, there's nothing I can do. I can't say, well, she didn't do it, so let her alone. I know that. I'm not asking you to. I'm simply trying to. Never mind, Nick. You don't understand what I'm doing. I'm not asking for help for myself. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing anybody can do. Only time is going to take care of this. I'm only trying to help you help yourself. Because I've been through it before. I've been through the pressure. I've been through the questioning. I've been through the whole shit. I'm simply trying to save you a few headaches and a few scars. And this is a thing that you need to learn about narcissists. They're either he the hero or the victim. 
So to say I'm the victim because I was shot while my kids were attacked, all right, that's the victim part of that. But then to turn around and say she's trying to save Knickerbocker, that's the hero part of that. There's no in-between. That's just the way narcissists work. They're either the hero or the victim. And to try to say that she's trying to save him is bizarre and ridiculous. Because she's not trying to save him. She's trying to save her own ass. And she's trying to make sure he doesn't say anything that's going to implicate her in this attack. That's the bottom line. But you don't want to listen. I'm just a hard hit. I know. I always were. That's right. Well, it's your decision. I'm not, you know, I can't make you promise to do anything. And I don't want to. You're a grown man. You know what's best for you. But I only know what can become of a lie detector. And I know that if they make that lie Phoenix, they're trying to find a sacrifice. I think they're trying to find, to find out who did it, Diane. Maybe they won't because they aren't looking for him. Don't you understand? They aren't looking for the man that did this. They're looking for the man that did this. Because it, it wasn't a man that did this. They know it was her that did this. They just need proof that it was her that did this. This is why they want the lie detector test. This is why she's so adamant about making sure he doesn't take the test is because she doesn't want any of the fingers pointed back at her. She wants everybody to believe that this straggly haired man is the one that did it. And as I pointed out in the last video, none of her accounts of the situation make sense because her account of the situation was, this, was that this man had already shot her kids before asking for her keys. Or, let me rephrase that, before she faked throwing the keys. So this man had already shot her kids. And if she faked throwing the keys, and as I said, that still means she's got to get in the car, like, according to her own testimony, she pushed him, then she jumped in the car, stuck the keys in the ignition, crunk it up, Close the door and drove off. That's going to take at least 7 to 10 seconds. This is not going to take that long for a gunman to turn around and put one bullet in your head. That's not going to take that long. So don't even come at me with that. Like that's a ridiculous story in itself. So they're only trying to figure out. They're, they're trying to tie up loose ends. They're trying to eliminate suspects so that they know who they need to look at. And... Diane Downs knows this, which is why she's so adamant about this man not taking the lie detector test. It's because she knows that lie detector test is going to point right back at her. They're only looking at me and my associates, people that I know. And I did not know the person that did this. I haven't got the vaguest idea on where to start looking for this person. So obviously, there's, people have called in. There's a lady that, that called in. She knows somebody that looks just like the drawing that was made up. And the man is absolutely insane. He's, he's the kind of person that would do such a thing just because he was abused. He shot a girl's horse, chopped up her furniture, tried to kill her just because she wouldn't date him anymore. This is another prime example of a narcissist trying to blame shift. They're trying to shift the blame onto anybody else. And again, this goes back to my mediation um, thing where they talked about, you know, how, you know, people will, like I said, throw noodles against the wall to see what sticks. And this is basically what she's doing. is She's literally throwing anything out there to see what sticks. And she's hoping... That somebody is going to stick to it and run with it. And nobody's buying her bullshit. That's really what it's coming down to. Nobody's buying it. I'm crazy. I need a dead ringer for us to 
Well, how do you know? Because the lady is, hold on. The lady that had the description called, called the police and said, I know about a guy that looks just like this, whatever, and they didn't come out to question her until my dad called them and said, why aren't you going to check? And then they made a half-assed approach. They went and talked to her, took a statement, description, whatever, and then she says, my daughter has pictures of this guy. She will be here in a week. Come back and we'll get you the pictures. And they never came back. They don't want to find anybody. Because they, they already got their suspect. They already know who did it. That's why they didn't follow through with that lead. They already know who did it. They know it was you. But, again, this is what narcissists do. Is they will literally try to push the blame on anybody else. So that they can get out of a jam. That's what they do. That's just how they operate. And this, again, is why I say um, our CPS workers need to be better educated. And, and even our court system needs to be better educated on these types of situations because people like this, this is what they do, is they're literally going to try to push the blame on everybody else to get you to look at anybody else other than them because they don't want you to know what they really did. They made fools of themselves. They made statements to the paper that I am the suspect. They made statements to the paper that after their grand jury they were going to bring an indictment. Then after grand jury they said, well, we decided to wait. And the only person they were going to indict was me because they picked me apart and said, you know, you're the suspect. And then they started talking about the grand jury and 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 they started talking about the grand is because she was the leading suspect. Because none of her stories made sense. Her description of the person who did it didn't make sense. Her allegations of who else could have done it didn't make sense. So they kind of stuck to her. And that's why they did what they did. And they made the right call. To be honest with you, they made the right call. Because she is the one that did it. They um, fabricated a lover for me here and embarrassed him in front of people. That just, again, I'm sorry. Don't mean to interrupt as much as I do, but they didn't fabricate a lover for her. Like I said, in the very next video that I post, it's going to be an interview with Steve where he mentions how many different lovers she had. And even she mentioned how many different lovers she had in a two-year span, not counting Knickerbocker and not counting Steve. Ten total in two years. So they didn't fabricate anything. They just found out the truth. It has been a very dirty, dirty mess. That's why we're suing, and that's why they need to hang me. Or whoever. If they can make it look like it was an old lover or a lover's wife or whatever, they know they'll get out of the lawsuit because they had just cause to take the route that they did. That's why they have to sacrifice somebody close to me. And I'm not going to let them do that. And that's why I'm saying I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for you, damn it. I love you and I know you didn't do it. No, she is most certainly doing it for herself. This ain't got nothing to do with him. She's trying to cover her own ass. That's what this is. And the best advice I can give you is to don't say a damn word. Don't take their stupid test. I can't live with you, but I'm not going to quit caring. Why do you think she's so adamant? And, and, and that's a, a clear example. Like, why, do you, why do you think she's so adamant about him not taking this lie detector test? And then she's going to try to portray it as, oh, I care about you. I might not be able to live with you, but I still care. No, that's a narcissistic way to, of, of convincing somebody to not to do something. That's what that is. And that's called, again, that's gaslighting. Is She wants you to care or she wants you to make, 
She wants to make you think she cares. Which is why she's saying what she's saying. The reality is, if she cares about what you say or how what you say might hurt her. That's really in basically all she cares about. I'm not going to fuck up your life. I never lied to you yet, ever. And I sure don't intend to start now. If I was calling to harass you, I wouldn't be saying things to help you. I simply want to tell you what is going on so that you don't make a mistake. And if you've taken the test, then don't worry about it. Because worrying about something that's already done is useless. Well, I haven't taken it yet. But taking it is one of the... Thing, you really are. She's only that I was really affected. I just can't see you taking a ball for something you damn well didn't do. Oh. Nick, I know that. You like my kids. And you're very passive. You have no motive for doing that. There's no reason to tell for you to do it. I wouldn't do it. I know you wouldn't do it. But that in itself is a lie. As well, actually a couple of lies. Well, actually a couple of lies. Like, and again, that's, that's how narcissists will operate is they will try to, to make it seem like they care about you, make it seem like they're trying to be the hero and trying to protect you, when in reality, she's just worried about what he might say about her. And then the lie part was that she said, oh, well, you love my kids. He made it very clear. If you saw the last video... And I posted it in the beginning of that video. He made it very clear to her that he didn't want to move to Oregon and that he didn't want to be a dad and he didn't want anything to do with her kids. So for her to sit here and say, I know you didn't do it because you love my kids, that's a lie. She's trying to cover her own ass. That's all this is. is she's just trying to cover her own, her own ass. That's it. Why did your father want to talk to me this morning? He wanted to explain to you exactly what I'm explaining to you. What they're up to. Everybody here knows the strategy. Why do you think the press is on my side? Because the judicial system here is rotten. It's fucked up. It's warped. They will sacrifice anybody to keep up appearances. They haven't lost a murder case here in 10 years, Nick. They fucked up this one. They didn't look for the guy, and he's probably the fucking out of the state by now. And now they have to pin it on somebody where they lost the murder case. Oh, they didn't mess this one up. They got this one right on the head. They, they hit the nail on the head with this one. They know exactly who did this. And she's literally doing everything she can to dig her way out of this. Because she knows she's guilty. And she knows they know she's guilty. And so she's trying to find anybody she can find to get her out of this jam. That's what she's trying to do right now. Big one, very well publicized one. Everybody knows this case. Everybody knows what's going down. The public is on my side. A few people are not, but most everybody is. And the press is on my side. Because I didn't do it. And they know what the detectives have done. They know what the DA's office has done. The way that they've interrogated Chrissy. They had her Chrissy when she was in intensive care. An eight-year-old had tubes running all through her body. Right. They're dirty, slimy people. It's just a job, Diane. It don't matter if she's 10 years old or 40 or 70. They're going to do it to everybody. Not in intensive care, they should not. Well, what they should Chrissy could have died. Well, okay. I'm not going to argue with you. Well, see, the whole... The, to touch on that one, when detectives are investigating a case like this, they want to get the answers as soon as possible before a person forgets what they saw. So that's likely why they questioned Cheryl the way that they did is because they were trying to get the most information they could get while it was still fresh on her mind. And again. Diane's 
only concern was how what her testimony or how her testimony could affect her. It has nothing to do with them actually questioning her in ICU. It's a, more about how Cheryl's testimony could affect her life. That's really what it comes down to. And that's why she has such a big problem with it. Is because she knows that when the truth comes out, they're going to know what really happened. And they're going to know that she's the one that has something to do with this. They're going to know she's the one that pulled the trigger. And she doesn't want anybody to know that. And so she wanted them to wait long enough for her daughter to forget what happened. So that she could not be implemented for the crime. Their job is not to damage my child any more than they have to. Somebody already started a job and we're damn lucky that they didn't take both of my kids. I hurt for one that's gone. Cheryl used to bring me roses after work. She always had something sweet to say. And somebody took her. And I'm not going to let somebody take my other two kids because that's all I have left. So please... For yourself. There's only three people left in this world that I love with all my heart and I would die for. If I had it to do over again, God, I don't know what I would have done. But I can't. It's all over. So now I have to go on and I have to do what's best for my kids now and you. You can't make me quit loving you. And everything I do is because I love you. I quit calling you because you seem to know what you want. And if you catch that part right there? What she just said? Everything I do is because I love you. This is coming from a woman who shot her three kids for this man. And she literally... Obviously, unintentionally ratted herself out by saying everything I do is for you. She shot her kids for for that man. Now she's trying to dig her way out of that grave. While also implementing her own self. As to who actually did this. And the motive as to why she did it. As I said in the last video. This was a woman who shot her three kids. To get a lover that would not be with her because she had kids a married man that would not be with her because she had kids and she clearly admitted right here in this conversation that there's nothing that she wouldn't do for him that everything that she done was for him and so everybody <clears throat> there's about six more minutes of this um conversation but i've really dragged this video on way too way longer than i expected to uh but there was just so much to unpack and un uh, uncover in this story and there's even going to be another follow-up video as i said in the last video it's going to be like a three-part series this is the second part of that series um, but like I said, I've, I've really dragged this on long enough and I'm not trying to make these videos too long. Um, so if you want to hear the full version of this, as you can easily look up Diane Downs secretly recorded, um, the Knickerbocker tapes. This is number two is, uh, with the quote unquote cops and robbers. You're welcome to look that up and to find the whole video or the whole recording to that. But I'm going to leave this video there because uh, I think we pretty much unpacked enough. And I think we pretty much um, got to the bottom of what really happened here. Um, feel free to leave in the comments what you think about this story and um, your comments and your opinions. And um, whether you think she did it or not. You know, I've got my own opinions, but, you know, I fully believe in the Constitution and that everybody has a right to their own opinions. So feel free to leave your own opinions in the comments below. 
And with that being said, I will see y'all in the next one. Have a good one.